One of the biggest takeaways from the previous episode was that Cameron McKnight needs to be a little bit more involved than he was the previous timeout. The fact that he, if we go here to his recent games, I definitely went the wrong way, but he took just seven shots in our first showcase game of the season compared to Albert Ellis, who took 18 shots in the game. I certainly want these guys to probably be a little bit more even in terms of their shot distribution. Now, the first step I have taken towards trying to get McKnight more involved is I've edited the touches tendencies. These used to be flipped with McKnight at 81 and Ellis at 84. Now when they're both on the court, McKnight should get priority touches wise over Ellis. I think Ellis will certainly at some point take over that number two player on the team. But as of right now, I think McKnight for the time being until Ellis can prove that he's a little bit more efficient, McKnight will be that secondary guy. So that is the first thing I have done. The second thing that I haven't quite done yet, but I want to do is do a little bit of tweaking here of the rotation. One thing we have here is McKnight sharing a lot of his minutes with Ayrton Saramago. And so I don't think that it's so much that Ellis is getting priority over McKnight when they're both playing. I don't think that's a big problem. I think the biggest problem is when Saramago is on the court, he is going to be the first option and he's going to shoot the ball a ton. We've seen that so far this season with his 47 per point performance. And so one of the things I want to do is make it so that when Saramago is not on the court, McKnight is. I've done that so far with Albert Ellis. Haven't done it yet with McKnight. The problem with this is, and the reason I haven't already done it, is our minutes at the two and the three are highly, highly contested. McKnight at 28, I'd probably rather have him playing 32 if I could, but I don't want to give Josh Green any less than 20 minutes. I don't want to give Lonzo Ball any less than 24 minutes. I don't want to give Max Christie any less than 24 minutes. And I don't want to give Isaiah Joe any less than 16. So what is the solution to our problem? I think it might be a potential Isaiah Joe trade. He already has just 16 minutes a game on this team. Not a particularly good defender. I guess he's tied with Max Christie. I just like what Max Christie brings, you know, in addition to the shooting offensively. I think he's a little bit better of uh, a driver and a passer than Isaiah Joe. Um, and so could we trade Isaiah Joe? Earlier on in the series, he was, you know, much, much needed shooting. But now we have... If you obviously we're not going to count campaign here, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six other players with at least a minus three pointers. So I don't think his shooting is quite as valuable as it was the first two seasons. While it might be valuable for another team, I'm not saying he doesn't provide any value. Of course, he's had solid moments for us in this series. That would drop us to a nine man rotation and give McKnight, Ball, Josh Green, and Max Christie each an additional four minutes. That makes us very susceptible to injuries, however, because if one of these guys goes down, we're gonna wish we had Isaiah Joe back. But that is one way we could get McKnight more minutes and thus have him be on the court whenever Saramago is not. So at this point in time, I'm at least going to seek the market on Isaiah Joe. Now, I know we're early on in the season and not everybody can be traded at this point. But for me, that doesn't really matter because, of course, we're not really trading for a player. I'm wanting a pick here for Isaiah Joe because any player we acquire via trade cannot play for us due to our draft only franchise rules. Is anybody willing to offer us an intriguing trade here. So the Magic are willing to offer us a 2031 first if we give them back a second. 
I think this makes sense for Orlando. They're probably trying to push to be a playoff team and they could certainly use more shooting in that lineup. The Mavericks are willing to give us just a, a bum here along with a 31 first. So it doesn't look like we're getting a first anytime soon. That doesn't surprise me. Isaiah Joe's not some great player. Phoenix, I don't think would do this trade, so I will not consider it. I don't think Phoenix would be looking to send any of their firsts right now. Um, the Thunder would give us a 31 first to get Isaiah Joe back with them. It also gave us Alex Caruso, which while he would not be able to play, he could provide some value as a mentor, which is interesting. It certainly maybe be an upgrade at the mentor slot and help McKnight get a lot of defensive badges. That's interesting to me. I don't know if I love the 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 pick here, but getting a pick and a mentor over just somebody else's 2031 first, I think is worth it for me. And in fact, I'm willing to to accept this offer. I was really just kind of gauging the market, but a mentor plus a first is pretty much as good of value for Isaiah Joe that I can expect. And just to make sure Caruso or Joe doesn't get injured it's to the point where Thund the Thunder could not do this trade in the future, I'm going to accept it right now. And that is a way for us to add an additional mentor here onto the team this season. Now I gotta go ahead and craft a new lineup for us. All right, took me a minute here, and this is the lineup that I've concocted. McKnight won't be on the floor, floor for every minute that Saramago is off. So, basically, there will be four minute stretch where Saramago is the only one of the big three on the court here to end the first quarter. Then there will be a four minute stretch to start the second quarter where McKnight will be the only one of the big three on the courts. And then Mago gets the final four minutes of the third quarter to himself. And then Albert Ellis gets the first four minutes of the fourth quarter. And then of course, they'll all finish out the game together in our starting lineup. This gives, I think, a more natural, I feel like everybody at this point is playing the minutes that I want them to play. Got at this point, you know, in the natural sound series, it took us a little bit longer to get to this point, but I think a nine man rotation is perfect for this squad. Playing about half the game feels right for Josh Green. Uh, 28 minutes for Ball feels good. 28 for Christie feels good. 32 for McKnight feels good. 32 for Ellis feels good. And so, We've got our starters playing a decent amount of minutes now. The only one not getting at least 30 minutes a game is Max Christie. So we'll see how this goes. I think there's a little bit of risk involved with the trading of Isaiah Joe, but it allows hopefully McKnight to shine a little bit more than he did in the last episode. That does uh, shake some things up here with the mentors. Alex Caruso will now be mentoring Cameron McKnight's still got campaign on Albert Ellis. We've got Draymond Green who has switched to Jalen Dern. I know there was some support for getting Jalen Dern a mentor here. It's post lockdown challenger and interceptor, which I think will help him be a better interior defender. And then we've now got uh, Kelly Oubre on Saramago. And I liked Draymond better than Oubre for Saramago, but I still think these are good badges for Saramago, and then next year, as long as Draymond doesn't retire, we'll, we'll, we'll switch that back. But that's the mentor update situation. In terms for the game we're going to watch this episode, I kind of want to watch us face off against the Kings. They, of course, acquired Luka in the offseason, which was kind of wild, swapping De'Aaron Fox for Luka Doncic. And I know we faced them here on October 24th. I kind of want to face them on the road here so let's simulate to this game three and four in the simulation leading up to this episode including some narrow victories a one point win over the sonics here saramago leads us in that game 28 9 and 4 mcknight picking up 10 assists on, on this game is not something he does often but shot four for 12 and over five from deep unfortunately 
but a double double is a double double and this win it would be mcknight leading us with 29 points on 9 of 11 shooting here and we'd have four players into the 20s in this victory over charlotte and with the exception of saramago all of them shot above 50 percent you absolutely love to see it and then against the miami heats we would pick up a 98 88 victory with 20 11 and 6 leading the way from saramago though he did not shoot the ball well from three in this game and in fact we had a lot of bad players hardy was 0 for 7 i don't know if i want him shooting seven threes in the game ellis was 0 for 6 the rookies combined for over 13 that's not great but we picked up the victory and now at four and five we head on the road to take on luca and the kings first time we will face the back-to-back -back mvp here in a showcase game in this series on a new team the biggest move so far i'd say in this series Kings starting 9-1, and one, so it'll be interesting to see how we can match up. One thing I usually don't do for the regular season, but I have done in this game, I've assigned Cameron McKnight to be the custom matchup for Luka. Something I do, of course, when the playoffs come along, but for the regular season, I usually just let him play. But I want to see how Cam McKnight can try and shut down the back-to-back -back MVP. Nice start defensively as Cam Christie forces his man out of bounds. Now with the ball here, gets a screen from Duran and pulls up off of it for the mid-range jumper. First points on the board for Vancouver. Chris Murray has space from beyond the arc, drills the three. Albert Ellis handoff to Saramago. Left hand finish attempt is no good. He starts 0 for 2. In this game, transition three for Luca, but a nice job by Ellis to be right there to contest. Luca, another jumper, but another nice contest this time by Cameron McKnight. Passing the ball around to Saramago, and he gets the flush. Strong drive over Murray and just overpowers him on his way to the rim. Luca with a step back gets his first shot to go. From the mid-range still some nice defense there but Luke is just that good what a flush by Jalen Duran on the pick and roll just seemed to keep going up on the jumper after Sabonis had reached the peak Luca missed there rebound goes to Duran now Max Christie gets a nice look from three was pretty much automatic in our first showcase game but that one will be a miss Luca from the corner splashes home another triple. Tying us up at eight apiece. Saramago, double down low, finds the open man. It's Max Christie, another even more wide open look, but slow start for him. Jalen Duran in the post, trying to find something over Sabonis. Trying to get it to Lonzo Ball, recently checked in at point guard. Instead, it's his turnover. Chris Murray in transition. Fouled by Albert Ellis. And gets the N1 chance. Ellis isolated in the corner against Luca and gets the stop. Transition. Josh Green pulls up for three. Rattles around and in. Been a bit of a lull offensively for Vancouver. Until that basket. Hopefully that can get them back on track. Luca from the corner wants to answer. And he does. Got a couple nice early stops on Luca, but he's starting to heat up. Lonzo with it behind the back, and then the finish with the left through contact. You love to see it, Lonzo Ball. I think he's thriving in this new kind of six man role that we've carved out for him here as Luca misses the three with the shot clock winding down. Lonzo. Open look, top of the key, too strong, but Jalen Duran, speaking of strong, a nice second chance put back dunk. Saramago, haven't seen as much from him in the first quarter as we did that first game, though that's not saying much. He was utterly dominant, but he does get the three there. Rosen will pick up a loose ball foul after the miss. Lonzo, 
Feeds inside to Saramago. Back-to-back -back buckets for him. Make it 21-17 here. Three minutes remain in the first. It's a bonus. Nice stop by the Rook. Down low and Andre Hardy. Lonzo with it. Pulls up after the screen. Andre Hardy tried to get the follow-through. Couldn't quite get it as successfully as Jalen Duran though. Lonzo match up with Sabonis in the post and happens to get the win. Transition to Saramago for the flush. Excellent two-way play there by the Blizzard. McCollum left alone for three off the screen. That drops in. Andre Hardy, top of the key, catch and shoots. Saramago with the assist. Lonzo. As Saramago decides to step in instead of just take the wide open jump shots. Had an easy basket there, but we'll get the deuce anyway with an extra free throw attempt on top of it from Andre Hardy. That one goes up and in for the Kings. Max Christie, a little bit of a slow start for him as we've Got down to the final seconds here of the first quarter. Luca in transition scores. Monzo with the first quarter coming to a close. Gets the three. It won't quite be a buzzer beater. 0.2 seconds remain. But the successful three will make it 32 24 after one. Liked what I saw, especially in the second half of that first quarter from the Blizzard. Lonzo to Leonard Miller, unable to connect for the pick and roll finish. Luca feeds it inside and no good on the basket either. Josh Green driving in on Luca with the hop step and the finish with the right. A nice strong drive by Josh Green. Rarely is he ever somebody that kind of pushes for his own shot, but I like it when I see it. Tough turnaround jumper by Luca Falls. Green to Lonzo. He gets a screen. Pulls up for a good look beyond the arc. Can't hit it, though. His three's been a little hit and miss to start this game. P.J. Washington, former Vancouver Blizzard, with the strong finish through contact. Lonzo gets another chance at it from three. This one finds his way home. Sending that blizzard lead to six here. Luca trying to answer using the screen, and he does just that. Luca, tough man to stop here. Haven't seen much of McKnight. We made the trade to try to unlock him here. Does get his first points of the game after drawing the foul. Lonzo hits another three. Luca 1v1 versus McKnight and finds the right angle on the drive to get the finish. Ellis to Miller and then a nice little inadvertent screen from Duran frees Lonzo up for another three. Now that jumper's starting to heat up. Albert Ellis have not seen much from him. We find a nice look for green light McKnight top of the key. Makes it a double digit lead for Vancouver. Now he's trying to get a stop on Luca and he does. Been a nice battle between those two. Cameron McKnight usually playing some good defense, but Luca's going to get his regardless. And speaking of getting his, Jalen Duran makes the most of that second chance on the inside. Halfway through the second now, 50 to 40 is your score. Nice feed by Albert Ellis results in the Duran slant. Albert hasn't really done much offensively for us yet, but I like that he's getting his teammates involved here. This time, pushing the tempo up to McKnight. Tries to get it to Duran, finding Leonard Miller wide open from three in the corner. Nobody near him, still can't get the finish, but Duran says he'll do it himself. Another second chance basket for Duran. He's been all over in this first half. An excellent play from our newly re-signed center. Leonard Miller going off the dribble for three. Don't know if that's the kind of shot we're looking for offensively, but Murray can't hit the wide open corner three. Now Vancouver going the other way. Leonard Miller a little bit more on the inside this time. Gets the finish. 
Luca off a screen. The three is a little strong. Albert Ellis with the rebound. He's doing a nice job on the boards here as well. Turn from the corner. Swings out to Ellis. We had a five on four advantage due to the injury by Sacramento. Couldn't make the most of it, but once again, second chance created by Jalen Duran. Leaning three by McKnight. And he gets it to go. He is definitely heating up here in the second half of this second quarter. Durin, another offensive rebounds. And that makes it a 20-point lead. So from here on out, we're just going to focus on the Vancouver makes unless Sacramento can make a comeback here. A really strong showing here in the second quarter by the Vancouver Blizzard. Putting up now 70 points, and Saramago misses the easiest basket he's going to get here as we head into the half. Luka Doncic is certainly having a good, good game, 26 on 50% shooting, but this Vancouver team is doing a lot. I mean, Lonzo Ball on triple-double watch off the bench. Saramago, 14, just one assist and one rebound, though, but a double-double at halftime from Jalen Duran. I mean, we've seen just how much of an impact he's made on the boards in this game. And Christian Ellis not doing too much. Two for seven from Leonard Miller. I could probably see him shooting less. But let's get into the second half here. Jalen Duran, isolation from beyond the three-point line. And he somehow gets it to go. I mean, let's go, Jalen Duran. Albert Ellis takes a McKnight screen and scores his first basket of the game. Much later than maybe you'd expect. I like that even though he wasn't somebody who scored for us in the first half, he was not forcing the issue. Just 0 for 3. Focused on getting his teammates involved. And finds other ways to impact the game when you're not scoring. And that's an important thing for good basketball players. Sometimes it's your other teammates turn to eat. Like Cameron McKnight, who's been excellent so far in this game. Like Lonzo Ball, who's having himself a nice game here. You can have McKnight here. He's got it down on the low block. Uses his leverage to get a nice layup there. Lonzo, beyond the arc, continues his good play and extends that Vancouver lead. Has another three lined up here and another make. Make it 92 points here in the third quarter. Lonzo, another jumper and another make. What a game! From Lonzo Ball here, and in the third quarter, Sacramento was not able to get into that Vancouver lead at all. And so we're just going to simcast here the fourth quarter. A convincing victory after the Isaiah Joe trade. I think this lineup is looking really nice. Luca ends up with 35 points, but he had 26 a half. So Lonzo ends up leading us today. Not by envisioned, but a much more involved game from Cameron McKnight, which of course was the goal of this trade. I don't know how Ellis ended up 3 for 13. He must have shot a lot in the fourth quarter uh, when we simcasted, but when you have Saramago shooting 40% and Albert Ellis shooting 3 of 13, you know, 20% thereabouts in a game, and you still take down a team of this caliber, things are looking good for the Blizzard. That puts us dead even 5-5 five and five so far through the first 10 games of the season we've looked good when we've played spotlight games wins of 14 and 19 when we're simulating these games though not looking quite as good ultimately i'll take what we're getting over the opposite i'd rather when i actually watch the games look good and lose every time we watch but win in simulation so i know we're going to simulate a lot of course in the regular season Hopefully we can play well enough and maybe this lineup change can spark some sort of winning streak, but we'll just have to see how the season goes. So far through 10, 5 and 5 is about what I would expect. And I liked the early returns on the Isaiah Joe trade because Emmer McKnight had a much better game here than he did in our opening night performance. That's all I've got here for the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Be back soon with more Vancouver Blizzard draft-only franchise. Until then, bring the Blizzard.